The next step is to start the water bath and begin to preheat the water bath. And then where the temperature setting is, that will get turned up to 46.5 or 47 degrees to preheat the water bath. When you've reached the maximum temperature of 47, the plus sign will be grayed out and you will not be able to increase any further. With the water bath warming, we can hang our solution onto the IV pole and then spike the bag and begin to fill the reservoir to preheat the patient's solution. The IV lines will be opened and fluid will begin to fill into the reservoir. While that fluid is filling in the reservoir, we'll go up to the screen and start the heat exchanger. When the heat exchanger starts, water will begin to fill from the water bath up to the heat exchanger and back down. Quick check to ensure the integrity of the heat exchanger. And then the entire heat exchanger is tilted forward and any additional air is cleared from the water side of the heat exchanger and it snapped firmly back in the bracket. Now with the patient fluid filling in the reservoir, we can go up to our screen, power on our pump, and actually begin to circulate the fluid throughout the tubing set. And this is pre-warming the fluid so that when we hand it to the sterile field, the fluid is close to the temperature that the surgeon will want. So the pump is powered up by pressing pump power. It now energizes our slider and we'll move it approximately halfway up. If we look down at our pump, we'll see that water is now flowing through our circuit and is beginning to become warm. The number up here is the milliliters per minute that is being circulated through the system. And anywhere from about 1,200 to 800 is a good setting when you're pre-warming your circuit. Something else we do is to clear any air from the heat exchanger. And this is accomplished by going to the reservoir and very slowly and briefly opening up the recirculation line. We can remove any air